The clouds are forming down the right field line. They have already formed for LSU. Five boots in the ball game, and the Tigers are behind Long Beach State 5-3. Long Beach State one out of 17 today with runners in scoring position. They have had countless chances to put it away. Davis's two-run homer in the first, they're only earned runs. The other three were unearned, and they have come from those five errors and one other misplay that could have been an error. This has been a bizarre game, Mike, simply because the bunting has been, the guys have been squaring around, and instead of dragging, just giving it away, and nobody's been charging. And it's it's been an amazing game. John Swanson, the new first baseman, and Adrian Antonini, the number eight hitter, will lead it off. He is 0 for 3. He'll be followed, scheduled. Kenny Jackson, the first baseman, and then back to the top of the order. Last chance for LSU. And the blade misses with the first one. Gonzalez would be the winner of this ballgame in relief. And he has been sensational in his last 14 appearances. Missed two and up. Antonini is going to be taking a strike. You take a strike in this situation until the winning or tying runs up at the plate. Mark Stocko is already out on deck to hit for Kenny Jackson. Strike call two and one. Gonzalez coming into the game and only walked 18 compared with 49 strikeouts. Antonini, a big, powerful right-handed hitter, pull hitter. Catcher sets up inside, inside for Antonini, and he nails that ball to right center. Base hit, cut off by Cradle, and Antonini will hold at first base. Clutch base hit. You really like the kid, don't you? I really do. But here's the one location that Antonini can hit the ball. And that's on the inside quarter down low, and that's where they give it to him. And he leads off the inning with a solid single. Mark Stocko will be the pinch hitter. Ryan Huffman comes in to run for Antonini. So your starting catcher is gone. Huffman with good speed. So safety on the football team has outstanding wheels. And Stocko with some power, four home runs this year, a 295 average as you see. The tying run is at the plate, lefty against lefty. <laughs> Strike call. Now you can go up there ripping. Now you got a chance to tie the game up with one swing. It was a tough spot for a left-handed pinch hitter to come up against a guy like Gonzalez who looks like he's throwing the ball out of your right ear anyway. But the pinch hitting philosophy is you go up there swinging. You can't afford to take strikes. One and one. And the LSU faithful biting those purple nails, hanging on, just waiting for one more rally to get them to a national championship. Well, don't go away because that's been the theme of this College World Series. Come from behind. Tapped foul off the first base side. One and two to Mark Stocko. Just when the 49ers thought it was safe to take a deep breath, the Tigers get a man on and miss the bottom of the ninth. Nobody out. Wind blowing to left. Again, the count rides at one and two. Stocker no action. Excuse me. No Stocker. action in the bullpen. Yeah. All right, they're going to go with him. I like the way he throws, keeps the ball down. Stocker's taking some good cuts. Breaking ball nearly hit him. Just looking for a little nick right there. Yeah, he would have taken it. Kept the inside shoulder right where it was. Right? Sandy Bertman, wife of Skip. She's been here before. 
and saw him come away with a national championship trophy two years ago. Two and two to Stocko. Fouled it off again. Stocko hanging in there against the tough left hander. Jason Williams the leadoff hitter is next. Dave Snow three outs away from getting into the national championship game against Wichita State. This is the kind of week it's been. Go in! Come up! Struck him out! Very difficult for a left-handed hitter off the bench coming up against Gabe Gonzalez, the blade. He's as tough on lefties as anybody here at this series. And he gets him on a great pitch on the outside. This has got two more. Two more to go. Jason Williams, two for four. And that one floats high and outside. Williams came into this game one for 12 in the College World Series, two for four this afternoon. Redshirt freshman from Gonzalez, Louisiana, in the biggest at bat of his young career. Side and high, 2 0. He's had a tough day defensively, but he can make up for it with one swing of the bat. Sports Center follows our broadcast. <laughs> Strike call, 2 and 1. And while we have the opportunity, my sincere thanks to Steve Garvey and Larry Conley and our entire crew. The best in the game for a wonderful week here in Omaha. We've had a ball, as they say. It's great. Long Beach lost its opening game, fought their way back through the loser's bracket. There's three and one to Jason Williams. He represents the tying run. Armando Rios is on deck and Russ Johnson after him if they can keep it going. And you may be wondering about the 49er bullpen. There's nobody in the bullpen. This is Gabe Gonzalez's game to win or lose. Ball four and Gonzalez wants to know where that one was. That was where the strike zone had been in the last half of the ball game. That was a strike one inning ago. This ball looks low, but that's where the umpire has been calling that strike. This game is played by human beings, and it should be umpired by human beings. And Gonzalez really burnt and had to walk back off the mound and get several of his teammates to come around and talk to him. And the home plate umpire is Don January going to get a uh, little conversation from Dave Snow as he heads out toward the mound. Now an umpire cannot argue or a coach cannot um, argue balls and strikes but he can say something that shows his displeasure. Well that's where we talked about the dichotomy of this game. Obviously the players who go out and perform we understand they're going to make physical mistakes but we want our umpires to be perfect and that just can't happen. They do the best job they possibly can. It's a lot of pressure on everybody. If you are watching on television that wide shot we had that is not a funnel cloud in center field. We're grateful to tell you that it's uh, part of the cloud just hanging down. That looks nasty from the Midwest but it's not what it appears to be. Well, those are fathers and Hail Marys really Boy. work then. <laughs> Armando Rios two for four. He represents the winning run. Doubled in the seventh to tie the ball game. Taps that one foul. And two years ago had the two run homer that beat Wichita State. So if you want somebody up who responds to the pressure this kid has done it. Even the fans have the rally caps on. Well we know there's something known as deja vu. Armando Rios's brother trying to pull his senior center fielder through. Two runs in will tie it. Three will win it. 
one and one. Gonzalez took a quick peek on that turn down to the bullpen. <laughs> like, well, it's all mine. He also looked at Rodriguez to get reassurance. Hit the left side. It's in the alley. But it's in there. Oh, my. It's off the wall. And it comes back to center. This game is going to be tied. Williams will score. 5-5. Five, five. Holy cow. Do you believe this? Nobody in this series is done until you put the stake in their heart. We talked about deja vu, and that was six feet from deja vu. That was almost a three-run home run. Rios just nails that ball to left center, and he's looking. Can it go? Can it go? Now he gets the bag, sees the bag in time. Armando Rios, three for five, two doubles, three RBIs. He tied it up in the seventh. And now he's tied it up in the ninth. What a performance. Look at this. They don't want this much. In the bodies of men lie young boys. And Sandy Bertman is breathing a little easier. Russ Johnson comes up with one out. He's one for three. And now some action in the Long Beach State bullpen. Todd Walker would be next. Wild pitch, and the, the air is at third, and Rios made the big turn. Oh, man. Now the infield has to come in, and Watley never had a chance. Watley, one of the best defensive catchers I've seen in college baseball, gets in perfect position, and it goes off his left shoulder. Nothing he can do about a ball that bites and kicks up like that. And Rios knew better than to try to be a hero. He's already been one. A runner at third, one out, and they are indicating Russ Johnson is going to get the free pass now. Well, I'm quite sure they're going to load the bases with one out. If they walk Todd Walker, the next hitter, it would leave it up to Barrios. Because Walker is a left-handed hitter. But a guy who's been three for four and shown the great stroke, 400 hitter for his two years in college baseball. Might walk him too. I would. He would set up a force at the plate. Don't let's not get ahead of ourselves here. They'll walk Johnson, and now we'll see what they do with Walker. The theory is don't let the best player on the opposing team beat you if you can all avoid it. Dave Goldstein is the relief pitcher warming for Long Beach State. He is the right-hander, and if they do put Walker on, they might go to him to pitch to Barrios. Five-five, bottom of the ninth. No indication yet that they will walk Todd Walker. The winner goes to the national championship game tomorrow. They're going to pitch to him. This game could easily be over. Sometimes you throw a couple of strikes or a couple of pitches just to see what the alignment is out there. It was almost over there. Watley had to go way outside to get it. The outfield is way in. They've got to be in a position to throw out the runner at third. Well, I'd bring that infield even in just a touch more. Got him swinging one and one. Great matchup. The toughest left-handed pitcher in this series against the left-handed hitters against possibly the best left-handed hitter in this series. 
Todd Walker's dad. Dave Snow showing tremendous faith in Gabe Gonzalez. Breaking ball. Yeah. Hit the glove of the first baseman. It's over. LSU wins it 6-5 with three in the bottom of the ninth. Holy cow. hit for Todd Walker his fourth of the ball game and LSU rises from its own ashes to get three in the bottom of the ninth and win it over a broken hearted Long Beach State Ball Club. We have had more miracle finishes in this College World Series than you can count. This one in the bottom of the ninth. And this the Cardiac World Series. They pitch to the best hitter on the LSU team. And he answered with a line shot off the first baseman. John Swanson just eaten up by it and Walker knows it's over. Young man who had struggled through the College World Series gets four hits and five trips and his father part of the celebration. That is the ninth comeback win in this Cardiac World Series. We'll be back to Omaha in just a minute. Once again, LSU the winner.